May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, again, I'm Susie Schaefer. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy that Chris invited me uh, to be here on All Saints Sunday because I love All Saints Sunday. So for me, a lot of that is about, about the music. Thank you, friends. So we just got to sing Lesbia Scott's very famous song for the day. Uh, I sing a song in the Saints of God. It's uh, actually, it's a surviving piece from a stay-at-home mom who had a background in theater, and she used the power of music and her gifts of poetry to teach her children all about God and the natural world. She actually wrote dozens of hymns like this, but this is the one that survived from the 1920s. And we've also already sung the piece that Ralph Vaughan Williams titled Sine Nomine. It's Latin for without a name. That's what he called the piece he wrote to set Bishop Lowe's poem, For All the Saints, to music. This hymn's really popular on All Saints Sunday first because it's a great tune because Ralph Warren Williams writes things it's fun to sing, but also because this hymn puts all of the theology of the day into a song for us. Today is about that the saints of God across time and space have struggled and worked in their own ways to shine the light of God in the world. And through God's light, they are still connected to each other. Now, the bishop's original poem was a lot longer. And we actually cut some verses already. <laughs> he goes on to write verses about different kinds of saints. There's like prophet verse, and there's a martyr verse, and there's an evangelist verse. And yet, in all of those words, he never names a single saint. Because by not naming any saint in particular, we are free to include all the saints, the specific ones who have moved our hearts. And that's part of what All Saints and its twin day of all souls is all about. These are the days to celebrate our memories in the truth of our ongoing communion in the body of Christ with those who've inspired our faith and taught us to walk in the way of love. There's the famous inspiration of saints like capital S Saint David and capital S Saint Clair. Then there's the more personal ones, the ones who shaped our stories that others may not know their names. And then there's the one whose names we don't know. After all, who can say how the particular action of a saint across time and across geography has had a ripple effect onto our own traditions and our experience of the Holy One. So the soul I'm wearing, it's actually it's an Easter stole because it has butterflies, which are symbols of the resurrection and new life and rebirth. But I brought it today with me as a reminder of what uh, conceptual physicists call the butterfly effect. Well, some of you may have heard of this idea. Uh, it got seized by popular culture and science fiction writing in particular. But it comes from this. At an academic conference, a meteorologist by the name of Stephen Lorenz posed this question. He said, can the flap of a butterfly's wing in Brazil cause a tornado in Texas? Here's the thing, it's not a yes or no question. It's a thought provoking question because he was trying to capture the idea that the smallest shift in one place can have enormous and unpredictable effects across the world, changing the outcome of entire systems. Now, Lorenz is not the first person who tried to talk about this idea, but for whatever reason, Phrasing it as the butterfly effect caught people's imaginations and took off. Proving his own point, really, because his first attempt in a paper to talk about this idea and this phenomenon, he used the metaphor of a seagull's wing flapping. And the seagull wing metaphor did not take off in the same way as the butterfly wing. 
small changes matter. And so thinking about that, we might wonder, for example, does one gun bought with love and money and removed from the world in Southfield, Michigan, cause a ceasefire to be reached that week in Ethiopia? What about 120 guns? So chaos theory, which is a thing that Lorenz is one of the founders of, teaches that yes, actually, events that seem unrelated and disproportionate on their faces can be connected across time and geography, even if we could never trace the effects. We already know this, right? The world is deeply interconnected. And whether we see the world through the lens of physics or meteorology, or as members of the mystical body of Christ into which we have been woven, we know that God's power can do more than we can ask or imagine. And that's what I love the butterfly effect for, for All Saints Day. It reminds us to look at what we are part of and imagine what we as the body of Christ are capable of in this world. There are so many saints of God knit into this fellowship. Queens and shepherdesses and soldiers and priests and people at church and school and lanes and seats. And their actions, both big and small, have changed the world in ways that they might never have imagined. And each time that we live into God's dream for the world, you know, God's dream where the hungry are fed and the poor are valued and filled, where injustice and inequity are dismantled rather than celebrated as signs of success. All of the efforts we make towards that dream matter even when we can't trace the effects. So when our efforts to create peace or feed the hungry or care for the sick or shelter the unhoused seem infinitely small in the face of the ginormous problems in the world, it is all saints that calls us to keep our hope alive that through the power of God, our feeble struggles, as the bishop wrote, our feeble struggles for good do ripple throughout creation. I do have another butterfly themed story for those of you who are maybe less science inclined. As we celebrate the Feast of the Living and the Dead this week, there's sort of a fall true to them between Halloween, All Saints, and All Souls. And it turns out that there's a lot of powerful words to these that come from Disney. Now, it's true there's a lot of Disney movies that get popular this time of year. This thing, Hocus Pocus, which I haven't actually seen, but it's really popular. And there's a more recent movie specifically about Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, called Coco. I so recommend this movie. It's so beautiful. But it's not the one I want to talk about today because I want to talk about butterflies. Specifically, they show, the way they show up in Disney's movie Encanto. Encanto came out maybe like a year ago or so. It's pretty recent. Okay, so for those of you who haven't seen it, here's what you need to know. The basic plot is about a family. They live in the mountains in Colombia, and each member of this family has a particular gift. Think like superpowers, like super strength and like shape-shifting, that kind of thing. The family is led by the abuela, grandma. And she's the matriarch, and she's the one who understands that these gifts were given to serve and to protect the village that they live in. So without giving too much away, seriously, you should see the movie, it's so good. Encanto tells the story of what happens when <coughs> gifts that were given to be good news for the oppressed, for the hungry, for those in fear, are held so tightly that they end up hurting the fellowship they were designed to serve. The plot all revolves around a young girl, Mirabelle, and her uncle Bruno. That's all we're gonna say, because as you may have heard, we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> so instead, we're gonna go back to the butterflies. So there's a scene in the movie that traces the origin of the family's miracle that they protect, that gives them these gifts. 
It tells Abuela's life story through the course of watching butterflies fly by. And the song that goes with this scene is called Dos Orguitas. You know what I mean. Dos Orguitas is Spanish for two caterpillars. And so the song uses the life of butterflies to connect this life story over three generations. It goes through Abuela meeting the love of her life, their tragic separation at the hands of war, and the way that their original miracle has created their home. The Spanish lyrics encourage the butterflies to find a future in the midst of fear. The Spanish lyrics are about becoming butterflies and they sing to the butterflies in order to build their future. The song asks them while they're in the chrysalis to believe, ya son milagros. Now, if you go look this up on Disney, they have uh, uh, not a direct translation because that's not what you do in lyrics. The Disney one's going to tell you wonders surround you. But the actual Spanish translation of Ya Son Milagros is this. Already they are miracles. They are already miracles in that chrysalis. And it is time for them to move forward to the future that is based on a miracle they didn't know they were. Jesus didn't speak Spanish, but here's what he said. The poor, ya son milagros. They are blessed now in the present. And God is moving them to a future based on that grace. The hungry, the hated, the abused, and whatever group you think of when you think of them, they are already miracles. And as followers of Jesus, we have been asked to commit to seeing them that way, as the eyes of the body of Christ. That song is housed in violence and fear in the movie, and Jesus knows that too. Jesus says, woe is already here. And that what seems like success or beauty or happiness may not be what it appears. And so how do the saints of God act with courage in the face of woes that seem bigger than blessings? How do saints take small steps to break things open and move against inequality and violence when those problems are so big? Because the saints of God believe that through the power of love, each person is already a miracle. And even the smallest miracle can change the shape of the world. The saints of God, all the saints, are simply the ones who do their best to live in the hope of the resurrection power, like transformed butterflies. They remind us that all the lessons available to us from physics or Disney from foreign languages, and from our lives. Teach us and show us that God's liberating love is making change in the world, bringing hope and good news to life. That's what it is to be a saint. Like that stay-at-home mom said, saints of God are just folk like me, and I mean to be one too. Amen. Amen.